Yo, 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 guys, we're back again today, and we have a special guest here, one of my elders, and he makes jewelry, amongst other things, and this is none other than my friend and my elder, Imhotep. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, brother. You doing good? You doing yeah, good? Yeah, That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, That's good. Yeah. So today we're here today, and um, we're going to be talking about a couple things. So I want to jump right into it. I have a lot of viewers that uh, like African jewelry and all kind of different kind of metal artwork. So, um, you know, if you maybe could, could you tell them how long you've been doing it for and uh, what you enjoy the most about it? Uh, I've been doing it, I would say, professionally since 1974. Okay. Uh, I started, I learned when I was in school, probably about uh, 71, 72, something like that. Okay. A friend of mine was making a spoon and fork jewelry. And uh, I saw it, you know, I'm like, hey, what you doing? You know, <laughs> right. you do that, you know, show me how to do it, you know, get me started. But I never thought I would be into jewelry itself. I just like to make stuff and I, I wanted to learn a technique, you know. Um, I, my favorite part of jewelry making, I think, is designing, you know. Um, I have a, a technique called uh, chasing, engraving, and repose. That is my favorite. I think it's probably one of the uh, not not very much done in this country. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't I don't see anybody else doing it. You know. Of course. So, uh, so that's my favorite. I like to do something that's different. You know. Of course. Of course. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I definitely agree. And you know, um, before we go <laughs> before we go along any further, I have to stop right now because I have to let them know. I want you to tell them how many times, because I actually have a lot of viewers on here that love my African uh, piece. And they always ask me, they, they ask me, where you get it from, where you get it from? This is the guy that I got it from. And now he's gonna tell you this short story real quick of how many times I've, I've broken this. I think uh, twice, right? <laughs> yeah, twice, yeah, I've run twice. two of them, yeah, yeah. This is the third one that he's got. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I really, um, I really enjoy this a lot. And this is made out of, um, um, Jet. jet. Yeah, Jet. Yeah, yeah. Jet. And yeah. Um, so Jet is, uh, I always tell, actually I had one viewer on here that asked me, you know, so what's the story behind Jet? And, I, you know, if you could maybe tell them what's the story behind Jet. Uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot of information about Jet. It's a nice, soft uh, black stone. You know, I can carve it easy. I like it because it's soft. You know, uh, the Native Americans used it for the spiritual thing. They did, and their jewelry and their... Uh, artifacts, you know, their pipes and stuff like that, of you course. know, for uh, ceremonial stuff, you know, they use a lot of jet, you know, I see it in a lot of their jewelry, you know, of course, and uh, that's, that's kind of how I got started with it, you know, it, it, rep it's not as hard as um, black onyx, people like onyx, but it, Onyx is not easy to carve for me. You yeah, know, I'm not a really professional carver. Of I do some, of course. You know, but uh, <laughs> you know, there there's people a lot better than me. But I just do what I, you know, you know, people ask me to do. Of course, and and you know the the reason I came because uh, one of my biggest uh, uh, requests from you at first was Onyx. I I mean that's what I thought I wanted because right. I was like yeah. a typical black right. rock. You that's know? right. Yeah. And that's so what everybody wants. Everybody wants <laughs> Onyx. You know. And, yeah. So uh, you know, but this means a lot to me. So I you know I really enjoy all the 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 um the work that you do and now could you show them maybe uh some of this is this new i've never seen this before no this is this is the old stuff that's not mine this is uh this was this piece here is i just did you okay. know uh could you show the them arms. on the camera i'm sorry oh, uh-huh you can this, put it like a little bit further up yeah see that? See. uh this is like i said it's based kind of my trademark the double onk you know the double uh, onk. <laughs> yeah the onk representing divine life i think we all need to uh, express our uh, acceptance that we are divine. Of course, of course, I've already accepted <laughs> you <know>. it. <laughs> you know, and move on from there. You know that 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 knocks, it takes a lot of stuff off of us. You know, it's like yeah, we are divine first and foremost, and then we build on that. Of you course, know. of course. Um, I think uh, what is my house I got on here? Uh, this is my uh, piece that I wear all the time. This is called the Jainame. Mm -hmm. This is a symbol from. Ghana, the Akan people, representing the omnipotence of God, you know, meaning God is all powerful. I fear none except God, you mm -hmm. know. So uh, I use that as my motto. Um, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, I saw a thing today where it was saying that, you know, America won't be great until they put God first. first yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, hey, I'm the world. Yeah, the, the world. world. Yeah. That's how I feel. You know, <laughs> if we do that, mm -hmm. it's going to be another world, of course. you know. So, you know. 
I agree, and I, you know, I actually have uh, the Jinami tattooed on my back. Oh, okay. And okay. I have a, I have a different uh, uh, a Dinkin. I think if I'm saying it right, I don't a know. A Dinkra. A Dinkra. I, I, think, I yeah. always say a Dinkra. I don't know why, but a Dinkra symbols, and uh, yeah, it means a lot to me too. I have that tattooed, and I have uh, like a war horn okay. and some oh, other yeah. symbols. Yeah, that's good. Um, so yeah, so definitely. So I was also going to ask you too as well. What is like the favorite? What's some of your favorite pieces that you make out of like what material or? What's the favorite pieces that you make in general as far as like if a customer asks you to, to make a piece for you? Uh, favorites, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very inclined to the Ankh. I'm thinking I'm going to do a show called uh, A is for Ankh. Okay. And everything is going to be an Ankh. I'm, every type, type of jewelry that you could possibly wear okay. is going to be an Ankh. Okay. You know? That sounds nice. Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I think, you know, that is something, once we embrace that, you know, uh, I think that'll that'll bring us up to a level where we are, you know, we're taking care of business on a different level. Okay. You know, you know, yeah. I, I definitely agree. Well, I appreciate uh, you know all the information. I we're gonna actually cut off from here, and we're gonna show some of your work in a minute. But the last couple of questions that I want to ask to you is, um, what's something that you would like to see in uh, like the black community? Like, what's something, and not just in America, but around the world? Like, what's something that you think that we need to do to improve as a people, or to individually in the family and the household around the world, how we can improve our stereotypes, our how we look at ourselves, how we uh, look at the world, or you know, some of us don't look at ourselves as worldly people, but just local people. Like, what do you think about uh, that in general? I know there's a lot of questions I bump bombarded with. <laughs> um, you know, it. I think it comes down to culture. Mm -hmm. You know, when when you know who you are, you know where you come from and everything. Uh, it gives you. For me, my experience was when I found out who I am, you know, uh, and was able to, um, like say, go to Africa and see the carvings and the paintings on the walls and everything, and they're black and they look like me, it, it took me out of that old world. And put, uh, now, you can't just tell me anything. Of course, yeah. You know? <laughs> course. So, first and uh, you know, what was the old saying is, Know thyself. Uh, know thyself. Know thyself first, you know, and I think that, you know, we need to understand where we come from first and foremost, you know, and then you have a foundation. Of course. You know, you're, 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 you're not uh, uh, come from slavery, of you course. know. Right, you know, they right. try to put this on us that, you know, we come from slavery, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, <laughs> like, okay, you know. So once you get an understanding of your history, you know, know where you come from, what we've done, then you know all that European history will be fiction. Mm -hmm. You know, like it really is. It really is. You know? Right, right. <laughs> like, you know, right, like it really you is. Know, <laughs> you will see it as it really is. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, me, it's all about culture. You know, you know yourself first and foremost. You know, family is very important. You know, uh, that's how the nation is built. Of you know, course. you start with the family. That's the basic unit you know everything starts at home you know mm -hmm. um and uh you know bring your family in as much you know is it, it, it i know it's a challenge yeah because <laughs> we've been so well miseducated that we've taken on the ways of the oppressor mm -hmm. you know uh you know what is that uh stockholm syndrome yeah stockholm syndrome yeah. you know it's like we're <laughs> suffering from this among other things what is the other one uh uh, uh, uh post-traumatic slave syndrome and that's you very know. and that's very real yeah, that's very hey, real. I'm yeah. telling you, that's man. You know, it's like uh, that's where we're, we're what we're, what I am trying to combat. Of course, me too. You know, that's my job. Mm -hmm. This is what I do. I make uh, symbols that are positive. What's your future endeavors, and where can people find you for as far as jewelry? I mean, as far as like websites or. Uh, I just took my website down this past summer. It was uh, it was on there so long. It's, so old, the prices are out of date and everything. So <laughs> I just took it down, and uh, uh, the guy who was doing it, he's in uh, what in Cincinnati, and I haven't, you know, I haven't had anybody else to do it. So I just been uh, when people want things from me, you know, I just tell them to tell me what we want, and I'll send them a photograph, you know. Okay. I show them some photographs, you know. Of course. And um, I'm planning on uh, relocating in Northern California. Okay. You oh, know. that was a big surprise here. I mean, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. Within a <laughs> uh, couple of months, man, I'm out of here. Of course. You know. Of 
and uh, you know I might do to put another website back up but I you know I might use Instagram you know yeah I would as long as you got my email you know you can uh, email and phone number Just of, let me know of you course, know of course uh, and I know oh, I'm you sorry can, I'm interrupt, and I'm sorry I'm interrupt you and you guys can also contact me if you need to get in contact with him for any pieces uh, jewelry and I was just gonna tell you too uh, I think it's ecstasy I don't know if that's wrong or right but ecstasy it's I think it's spelled E C T Y um, they, Etsy. Etsy. Yeah, uh -huh, Etsy. Uh -huh. You know, that's a good thing. I also, uh -huh. like Instagram to sell right. pieces. I heard of that. Like I heard that. I haven't tried it. So, so, yeah, definitely. So, definitely. Well, as always, I appreciate your time. And now we're going to go and show you guys some of his pieces because I know you guys are being sick of hearing me talk, right? <laughs> so, I know you guys. <laughs> but once again, I appreciate your time so much. All right. And we're going to go show you guys pieces. And if you need to get in contact with him, contact me. Or maybe I can uh, get his email to you guys and I'll put his information in the box. So, we are out of here until next time. This technique is uh, it's basically called wax lost wax technique, where uh, I use a I, I start off with a, an original piece, I carve it or I uh, fabricate it in metal, and then uh, I uh, make a rubber mold. I go through a process where the rubber this machine over here is called a vulcanizer. It has a mold in there now. It's vulcanizing, and then when it gets done. I can I cut it open and I can uh, take the, uh, the wax model out, you know. And uh, then with the wax model, uh, I build what they call a tree. Like this, this piece right here, you know, that's a, that's a tree. And, uh, you know, and then you close it in one of these uh, flasks and you fill it with plaster. Uh, you know, well, you let the plaster harden and uh, you put it in the oven and the wax melts out of it. That's why it's called the lost wax technique. And the, uh, the, and the uh, indention in the plaster from the wax is where your metal goes in to make the actual jewelry. It's a kind of long process, but uh, it's ancient, ancient, ancient. Uh, you know, the ancient Egyptians used it, you know, what, uh, 6,000 years ago. Mm. You know, it's been around. The the French renamed it, you know, or as Europeans do, they rename everything. <laughs> so, change the name to protect the guilty. Yeah. Uh, they call it the Seer Purdue, you know. But uh, it's basically lost wax. You know? um, I use it for uh, custom designs a lot of times and reproducing things, symbols uh, that I use a lot, you know. Um, so that pretty much uh, most of my work is this time is casting. I do another technique called fabrication. Um, I think there's some pieces downstairs you can, I'll show you uh, that are fabricated. <clears throat> this is uh this is a wax injector. I'm injecting the wax into this rubber mold here. This is one of my original pieces. It's probably uh, I think from what 
very delicate one here. Might as well go downstairs and see the jewelry. Uh, like the uh, the the casting once it comes out, you know, uh, like I showed you the uh, the um, wax model upstairs. You know, this is what it looks like after it's casted. This is bronze. It's going to be uh, bangle heads. Different stages of finishing. You know, this is before the polish. This is grinding. This is after the polish. So I'll set the stone and I have uh, a piece that goes inside to, on top of the stone, you know. It's gonna be a hay roof, gonna be a black onyx stone in there. This one I think is probably gonna be amber. Okay, uh, the other technique other than casting is fabricating. Uh, where I, uh, on some things you start with a flat sheet and on some things you start with a piece of wire. You know, these are basic. That's just uh, you know some copper wire that's been soldered. Uh, this is taking it a little step farther, where you hammer it and you stamp it and put designs in it. You know, give it a little something. And this is uh, 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 a sample of um, where you use sheet. You know, what I do is I draw the design on there, then I cut it out. You know, this is the saw here. Uh, a piercing saw uh, and draw it and this is what they look like when I get them finished you know? this is copper it can be done in any material uh, this is uh, another example of uh, uh, fabricating this is what I was telling you the technique this is known as uh, chasing chasing is the line that goes around the, the basic design and then you have the repose which is the raised part you know that you that you see there with the design that makes it stand out and then the engraving is the background as you see you know, a pair of earrings i sold the bracelet it was a matching bracelet but the guy he bought the earrings he's about to brace it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's my favorite. That's what I like to do the most, you know. A lot of stones. You know, these are wire. This is basically, you know, what I, like I say, when I'm making ear wires or, you know, pendants and loops and chains and things like that, you know, I'll use wire. Uh, sometimes I'll make the wire myself. Sometimes I'll buy it, you know, if it's thin, I usually buy it because it's harder to make. I'll uh, make the heavier gauges like for the bracelets in there. Um, um, this is just a, kind of a sample of stones, you know. This is a fantastic, this is a Ethiopian opal. It looks like something uh, 
We call kryptonite. <laughs> yeah, kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Something. This is uh, Ethiopian opal also. You know, it doesn't have the same fire, but it's it's, it's a nice piece. And it's, it's like your old piece. Old <laughs> <laughs> that's my old Africa. Both of them. Yeah, that's both of my old Africans right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I glued that one back together. <laughs> these are, uh, you know, different stones. These I didn't carve. You can uh, think these are... I'm trying to think where I got these. I think I bought these in Egypt. I bought these in Egypt, you know. Uh, I bought a bunch of uh, scarabs when I was over there. Lasted me for years. I bought so many. I liked them, you know. And then I started carving them myself. This is amber. It might not be amber. It might be copal, which is similar. A reconstituted amber. <clears throat> That's what it looks like. Different tools. These are basically the chasing tools what I use to make the lines, you know, to do the basic design. These little tools here. You know. I make them out of, uh, I take old tools like files and I ground them down to make the shape that I want, you know. Some are pointed where I can make line and then some are dull so I can push the metal out to give that, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, raised texture, raised, uh, how you say it, three dimensional, mm. at least two dimensional, mm. <laughs> two dimensional, you know. Just some basic tools there, you know, chasing tools, stamping tools and stuff. Some I made, some I bought. They're like birds, you know, like when you do stone setting. Um, I use them mostly for, you know, the diamonds and stuff. I don't do a lot, but that's that's you know I use them for that you know the face is looking like us you know and um, this is just some basic designs you know some of my older stuff it's a combination of brass and ivory these are ivory hand carved these, these you can't see them they're not in color but they're they're inlaid with different colored stones you know this is um, that, that same technique with the bronze and the copper. This one is gold. This was one of mine. It's like 18 karat gold, man. You know, it's probably it's about it's about that actual size. You know, and this was a carnelian. I wanted to put some lapis down there, but the brother was thought that might be a little bit too much. <laughs> mm -hmm. I met a brother in Los Angeles who was a chiropractor, and he healed using stones and metal. He wanted me to make some uh, things for him. This is that, uh, the piece here. Uh, and the, what it looks like. The belt buckles. Mm. I have a partner who makes leather goods and I was, he was making the belts and I was making the buckles for him. This is that, that combination of bronze and copper. Mm. This piece, I, I copied, uh, this is one of the pieces that was in the King Tut exhibit. Mm. And I, uh, you know, I liked it and I reproduced it and when I went to Cairo, I saw the actual piece in the museum, man. Mm. Fantastic. That was like uh, a dream come true. I bet. I, I spent three days in the Cairo Museum, man. And uh, they sent the guards in after me, man. <laughs> they sent these big Nubian brothers in there, man. You know, <laughs> told me that, you know, oh, will you follow me down to the office, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they started questioning me, man, what I was doing in there every day, you know. Mm. And, uh, you know, he checked out my passport and everything. And the guy said, uh, oh, 
your name Jim Hotep, are you? Your father must have knew something. <laughs> I said, well, what was you expecting? You know, mm. like, you know, like, we don't know nothing. Of course. You know? mm. uh, yeah, but they took me down in the basement of the museum and showed me Zozer's mummy. Mm. You familiar with Zozer? Mm -hmm, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. You know, they showed me Zozer's mummy, boy. I'm saying like, well, why ain't you got this out there? You know, I, exactly. That's how they yeah. knew us, man. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. it was like, they looked, it was too much of a brother. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Too, too black. Uh -huh, you know, too, black uh -huh. say, too black, too strong. Uh -huh, you know? uh -huh. So they didn't want to put him out there. You know, they want all them little, the later, what they call, uh, um, who was it? The, uh, um, uh, the Macedonians and mm -hmm. the Greeks and the when Greeks. they came, mm -hmm. they were imitating. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they were trying to do everything that the ancient Egyptians had done. Mm -hmm. So they were, you know, they were uh, imitating the stuff, uh, and they were using their own faces. Mm -hmm. You know, so they looked more European. Mm -hmm. And these are the ivory pieces. This is the only time I ever carved any jade. That was one of the hardest pieces I ever done. Man. You know, I've always wanted an Africa made out of like jade or ruby. I know yeah. you told me that one day. Yeah, man. Them. You know, this is uh, what they call Obi Inky Obi. We use that for Omoja as the uh, first uh, uh, symbol of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. These are all ivory. All of this stuff here is ivory. I used to do a lot of ivory back in the 80s. Mm. You know. Hair combs, you know. These, I was saying, you know, these folk here ain't ready for all that stuff. No, they're not. You know. Uh, this is, uh, these are hair combs. This is ebony, amber, and ivory. That's all inlaid in there. Man. Oh my God, I need one of those. Yeah. I don't know if you're ever going to make one of those again, but I need one. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, can't see this too good, but this is a necklace I made for this sister. She's a, a minister, a preacher, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. You know. That's, uh, I think it's, this is just, yeah, just a little, some of my old promotions and stuff. This is what I looked like 30 years ago. <laughs> I really have to get a closer one, this uh, 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 yeah, uh, This is my, uh, I think this is the shop in my house. I think this is one of my stores. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep, those was the, as they call the good old days. The good old days. See, you ain't told you Africa up yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, what's up? Hey. Shalom. What up? Hi. Africa!